Hello everybody, welcome back to Football Manager 2021 Into the Future. My name is Steve Byrne and this is episode 2 and in this episode we're starting in the year 2060, so that's 40 years ahead of when the actual game starts. Episode 1 was set 20 years after, so that was 2040 and episode 2 is another 20 years later. So here we are in 2060. So with that said, let's get cracking. So I'm going to start like we did in the last episode, we're going to go to England to see who has been winning the leagues and the cups and who the you know the major teams are right now. So what we'll do is start by clicking the nation and then click the Premier Division. So as we can see in the year 2060, the current champions, much like where we are today, is Liverpool, followed by City, then United, Everton, and Arsenal and Chelsea wrapping up the European places. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the past winners in the last 20 years, so from 2040 to 2060. So let's see if there's any unusual winners or anything like that. So here we go. So as we can see, if we go back all the way to 2040, yep, in, we finished episode one with Tottenham winning it three times in a row, I believe. So they've won up to 42. And as we can see, there's not been a lot of change in the power of the English game. With you know, there's an emergence of United getting back to their best, and then City, Man United, Liverpool, Tottenham. You know, again, it would have been quite some over a decade since they'd won it. Then Chelsea and Liverpool have just been dominating it for the last four years. But there is a surprise inclusion in the runs up. We see Derby in the 2055 56 season, it was quite an impressive feat for them. And what we do is now we're going to have a look at the league to see if there's any. Should we say unusual teams? You know, teams that you wouldn't really expect to be in the Premier League right now. So let's have a look. So as we can see, as we're scrolling through, you've got pretty much your main teams, let's to be fair, you know. There's no outstanding team that you'd go, you know, like Accrington Stanley or something like that. So in the year 2060, the Premier League is pretty much as it is today. So I'm just going to pop down to the Championship to see if there's any teams in there that, you know, you wouldn't expect to see. Oh, wrong button. No, we could do it that way, don't worry. So, what we do is, so we can see Millwall are coming up to the Premier League, followed by Brighton, and Sheffield United have won the playoffs. Um, in this division, I guess a few notable teams that you can see down there. Palace, Leicester, you know, they were champions, now they're playing their trade in the championship. Um, other than that, I think, you know, you're looking at a pretty basic standard championship with the teams involved no offense if you support any of those teams and we'll have a quick look at league one is there any major teams that would you know shock us again there's a few teams you know like Nottingham Forest Ipswich but other than that I wouldn't say there's anything massively outstanding that makes me you know think otherwise but uh, with that being said we're going to go and look at the English Cup aka FA Cup so we can see it, Derby. So, in this year, the holders are Derby County. So, they've obviously done a runners-up a few years ago. Now they're the FA Cup winners. So, if we look at the past winners, we go back to 2040. So, Arsenal were the FA Cup champions that season. Sorry, we've been Liverpool. Then Arsenal started the trend. Tottenham, Southampton beat Man City. Nice. Villa, we, we looked at that in, them in episode one and... You know, they've done some magical things. They won the Champions League, the Premier League, and the FA Cup as well, all under the management of James Milner. And if we go through the rest of the seasons, you know, we're not seeing any shock teams here. Again, Derby, you know, they've done pretty well. They've got themselves two wins in the last seven years. Uh, even West Brom, West Brom Watford final in 58 59 season. That's pretty good from Watford, um, from West Brom shall I say manager is Omar Bogle so Omar Bogle, yeah man management of 20, motivating 16 so yeah he's got some credentials there Oh, dokie so we've had a look at the Premier League and the FA Cup you know, Derby being a notable, noticeable difference here I would say the rest of the season's been 20 seasons have been pretty uh, standard really so now I'm going to pop over to Spain. We're going to check out La Liga. OK, 
Okay, I'm not sure why it's not letting me search Spain. We do it this way, yep, that's fine. Okie dokie, so as we can see from the 2040 season, there's been absolutely no change. Barcelona, Real Madrid, Barca, all the way through for the next 20 years from 2040, it's just those two absolutely smashing. Even the runners up, there's what one noticeable change Atletico Madrid. The teams, you know, the finishing third were exactly the teams that you expect to finish third, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's not any surprise there, really. It's always Barcelona, Real Madrid. Look, the last team to win the league over them was Atletico Madrid in the 2013 or 14 season. So, not a lot of change there. So, now we're going to pop over to France. Let's see how the <laughs> legal one Uber Eats division is winning. Now, I forgot to do this in episode one, but when I looked at it, Paris had won the league 20 years in a row. So let's see if anything has changed in that aspect. So the answer is no. Paris dominant all the way since the 17-18 season. <laughs> they are absolutely destroying that league. Obviously, I've got a bit of money to spend, as, as we can imagine, but Monaco finished second, Marseille, Lyon, Rennes had a little go, and in Reims. But uh, other than that, Paris are absolutely dominating French football right now. And it's probably going to continue. Now we're going to pop over to Germany to see how the Bundesliga is going. So we can see here, since the 2040 season, Dortmund had a few goes in the episode one, but since then, Bayern Munich could be dominant for 13 years, up to 53. Dortmund had a couple of titles in a row, and now we look, we're back in Bayern Munich to go on another run of probably 10, 11 trophies, championships probably. Um, Dortmund, you know, consistently finishing second, a few occlusions of Bayer Leverkusen, Wolfsburg and Hoffenheim, uh, FC Köln, but... Uh, pretty straightforward in the German league much like France really and the Spanish league is quite what we are predicting so now we're going to check out Italy so we're going to have a look at Syria see who is running away with that so, so we go back to 40 so Inter Milan yeah that's right they were in episode one we saw that they pretty much dominated for a whole decade and uh, as we start the new episode two, they have a, they start with a couple of um, wins under their belt, and then Milan take two, Inter bring one back, Milan, Inter, Lazio, Inter Milan, Napoli, Inter Roma, Inter Lazio, Napoli. So pretty straightforward, you know. It's the teams we expect, but I'm glad to see that in the last four years there's been four different winners. So you know, there's not a runaway team in the Serie A right now. So that's quite encouraging. There's a good challenge going on in Italy, I'm sure. So um, what we'll do now is we've checked out what we call our major leagues. We're going to check out the Champions Leagues and the Europa League. Um, obviously, they're not called the Champions League and Europa League because of sponsoring rights, but we're going to check the past winners. So as we see, the current holders are Manchester City. They beat Barcelona 2-1 this year. So let's have a look at the last 20 winners. So... Barcelona were the last team to win it on episode one. And then as we just flick through, we can see, you know, your main teams again. United, City, Barca's, Madrid's, Tottenham, surprise inclusion in a 52-53 season. They beat Barcelona in the Millennium Stadium in Wales. Stadium, should I say? <laughs> Stadium. Um, City, Liverpool, Bayern, Barca and Man City. Yep, so in that sense, the Champions League is your same old teams winning the t the Champions League really I think in episode 1 we had uh, that's it Aston Villa like I was saying about James Milner yeah so Aston Villa has been the only surprise inclusion I would say in the last 40 years uh, now let's pop down to uh, the Europa League so we can see here the holders currently Valencia they beat Raul San Sebastian which I believe is Raul Sociedad in Paris, France. So, 20 years ago, we were looking at Villa. They started off the episode 
followed by Arsenal, so two English teams winning that. Uh, Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Everton, Liverpool, Derby. There we go. So they've had a few decent titles, Derby. You know, runners up in that year as well against Everton. That's a surprise one. Young boys beat Liverpool at Villa Park in the 49 50 season. So, you know, that's a new team on this sheet, really, since, you know, look, they haven't won it since we started this. So, yeah, young boys, uh, Sevilla, Arsenal, Liverpool, Bilbao, Leverkusen, United, City, Arsenal, Tottenham, Valencia. So, again, teams here that are winning the teams that you expect to see winning European competitions, all but young boys, which is a, you know, pretty good accomplishment, especially for them to be beat Liverpool so well done young boys um, ok that's the European section done we're going to have a look at the um, World Cup so as we can see we're going to start with we can see the Brazil are the current holders and they obviously won that two years ago and they beat England 2-0 in the final um, so we finished our episode on the last one England <coughs> excuse me, had beaten Turkey in South Africa, England retained their World Cup credentials by beating Italy in Germany in the 2042 season, and then in the 2046 season, Argentina beat Belgium in China, and then Italy beat France in Brazil, and then Holland would that be their first World Cup win? They've had so many finals, Holland have never managed to win one. Yeah, I believe that is. Holland beat France in France in the 2054 season. And then current champions of Brazil who beat England in South Korea. <clears throat> now we're going to have a quick look at the European Championships. Football Championships, so not the Champions League again. This is the, the Euros, as, if you will. So as we can see, France had a current host who have just won it this year. No, sorry. In the last tournament, so... Actually, the World, uh, the Europa Championship is just coming up. We'll probably simulate it a bit too short, but we can see who the winners are in the next episode. So, if we go to the past winners, Italy beat France in 2014 in Portugal. Then Portugal beat Ukraine in Ukraine slash Poland. Italy the, then beat England in Scotland, Wales. Spain beat England, poor England, not doing well there. In Russia, and then the current holders from 56, France beat well. Northern Ireland in the Switzerland Austria so what we're going to do now we're going to have a look to see who the most expensive player in the world is so last time it was an Arsenal player who's probably now retired but we're going to change by value and then click there and we can see again it's another Arsenal player so this time it's Lennon McGinty who's a Scottish international I'm sure Age 30 rated 92 million. So let's check out his stats. So, I mean, just to look at, so he's a forward. And look at his stats here, look. Look at that graph. Look at the numbers. You can see why he's valued at 92,000. 22 goals for his club this season. So, Lennon McGinty is the world's most expensive footballer in the year 2060. Followed by Alfie Small, an Englishman at Barcelona. Plays left wing. Pretty good return. 88 caps with 48 goals for his country playing on the left wing. Although he could be playing up front as well because he's quite natural there. And then finishing off the top three would be Dominique Libongo from France who plays for Liverpool. Again, you can see why his stats are quite high without value. Pretty impressive. So, in the last episode, we had James Milner dominating management. He won the Champions League with Villa, he won the league with Villa, and the Cup with Villa. And then he went on to Inter Milan, as we saw, Inter Milan during that period had won like 10 Serie A's in a row. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to search for James Milner. Hopefully he's still management in management. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so we can see he's retired. So have a quick summary I'm going to scroll down so yeah we he, he took charge of Villa during his tenure he won the Premier League the Champions League and the FA Cup 
that's right. Then he went on to Real Madrid. <laughs> he won the Champions League, Super Cup, Spanish Cup and the Spanish Super Cup. Then he went to Inter, so he spent six years at Inter during his tenor. Milner won Syria in 20, 41, 42 and 45. So he wasn't part of that dominant spell, as we were saying, but uh, he's definitely got some titles in him. Um, telling Super Cup five times, and then he had a brief spell in charge of Liverpool between April, August 46 to December 47, and he won the FA Cup. After that, he uh, enjoyed six years at Tottenham, where he won the Champions League again. He doesn't stop winning things, this boy. The FA Cup and the Community Shields. So from there, it looks like he's retired. So that would have made him 71 years old when he retired. So, I mean, that's quite some going. So that's that was quite interesting to read about James Mill to see how dominant he, he was going to be. So... Yeah, there we go. So his management career started at Coventry, off to Newcastle, dominated Villa, and won trophies in the next five teams that he managed. So Villa, Madrid, Inter, Liverpool and Tottenham. So that was quite interesting to read about him. Um, and other than that, I think we're pretty much good to wrap up this episode. So if you're here, thank you for sticking until the end. Uh, if you'd like to find out any other information about this database and this save please do drop a comment in the comments section below um other than that you know i'd like to thank you for watching take care bye bye